Methane plus chlorine is a chaotic reaction. CH4 will only react with Cl2 as long as there's UV light around, which will help to break this molecule apart into two chlorine radicals. And you might think that it operates something similar to a double displacement reaction, where a CH3 from this will combine with this one of the CLs to become CH3Cl, and then the leftover H and Cl will react together as well. Now, that is what happens, but it's certainly not double displacement. And then this CH3Cl can also itself react with chlorine, which complicates it. In fact, if you react it with another chlorine molecule, perhaps you'll end up with CH2Cl2, and you'll get another Cl out of that. The CH2Cl2 can also react with another chlorine to become CHCl3. And you can do it a fourth time to end up with CCl4. The point is, you could end up with any combination of a mixture of uh, chloromethane, dichloromethane, trichloromethane, or tetrachloromethane. And there's not... I mean, if you flood your reaction vessel with extra chlorine, you're definitely going to go to the end of this reaction scheme. But if you mix just the proper amount to make, say, CH2Cl2, some of the methanes are going to react all the way anyways, and some of them are going to be left over. So you can't specifically target one of these product molecules and hope that that's just what you have as your final uh, final product. You're going to end up with a mixture when you're doing this reaction. Now, that being said, methane plus chlorine can give you chloromethane. Perhaps that's what your teacher wants to hear. Perhaps, though, you came for the mechanism. When chlorine gas reacts with UV light, some people will write that as H nu, some people will write it as UV, what it does is it breaks the chlorine up into two chlorine radicals. And radicals mean that you have an unpaired electron, and that's not particularly stable. In fact, it makes these chlorines much more reactive. What happens then is that the methane that encounters a chlorine radical will give up a hydrogen, and the hydrogen gives up one of its electrons in the process, and it ends up staying as a CH3 radical because, again, the hydrogen that was bonded to one of the carbon, like one of the hydrogens bonded to the carbon, brought an electron with it to pair up with that one. Now there's an unpaired electron there. That CH3 is likely to react with a chlorine gas molecule. It will become stable as methyl chloride or chloromethane, but because it needed one of the electrons from the bond to pair off with that unpaired radical, you end up recreating the chlorine radical. Now you'll know that chlorine radicals cause this kind of catalytic, catalytic uh, issue, if you know anything about ozone depletion. But what I'm gonna point out is that the Cl that was used up at the very beginning here, is reformed in the next step. So you haven't really lost a chlorine radical. And in fact, this CH3 radical was an intermediate, so it kind of cancels out from this scheme as well. If you take a look at the two blue reactions that I have written here, you'll see that it's CH4 methane plus Cl2 chlorine gives you methyl chloride plus HCl. But it was much more complicated than that because you needed to break a chlorine up into two radicals. That radical caused the methane to break apart. It caused the formation of methyl chloride and reformed the chlorine radical. So that chlorine radical was really just a catalyst here. This whole chain of events is not going to stop until the radicals, I don't know, react with each other. Perhaps you have two Cl radicals that happen to collide with each other, they will react to form chlorine gas again. Cool. Well, that's the end of that.
methane and chlorine make methyl chloride, and then also dichloromethane, trichloromethane, tetrachloromethane, depending on how much you have around. Nice. Best of luck.